Hello everyone and welcome to another video on the TOLIS Airbus A321 and today uh, quite a short video for you and what we're going to look at is how to set up holding in the FMGC um, as we would do a day to day when the airspace is busy obviously it's not very busy at the moment with the uh, pandemic across the world but uh, normally a lot of airports like the airport we're going to today it can be uh, quite a common occurrence I'm a real Airbus pilot, I have uh, a few thousand hours flying it, so hopefully this can help bring another perspective to your home simulation. Obviously this, I'm not going to show real airline procedures, I'm just showing you how the systems work and how you can use them in your home simulators. Uh, it's not intended for any real world use obviously. Great, so let's get started. So here we are then, as you can see we are in the cruise now, 35,000 feet. Uh, this is a short flight from Edinburgh down to London Heathrow, I've made it today. Uh, Heathrow is a very common place to have to hold uh, in real life, it's obviously a very busy airport. Passengers are walking around the cabin uh, and we're all set up for the cruise. I've also already loaded the FMGC for the arrival. Uh, if you need any help doing that, uh, I've got a video showing you. Just copy that. Secretary. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is look at holding the aircraft where we are. So let's say we wanted to put the aircraft into a hold in our current position, so just somewhere along this green line. As you can see, our current routing is Nugra South, and then we're doing the Bobbington arrival into London Heathrow. So it's very easy. In the MCDU on the flight plan page, if we go up, we have our current two waypoint, which is Nugra, and we can see that on the navigation display, Nugra. And it's written up there as well. That's where we're going. Our from point, if we line select key this point here, if I click that, we then get uh, a lateral vision from present position, P pause, present position. And now I simply go and select next to hold, hold. If I bring up the ND and zoom in, you'll see what I'm doing. And now I can type in an inbound course and a direction and a time and it will simply add the hold where we are. So our current track is 170 degrees. So if I type in 170 degrees there, it automatically fills up with right turn one minute. And as you can see, that would start now. And if I zoom out, you'll see that on the navigation display. And there we are, a hold. If I now go back to the temporary flight plan and insert it, there we go. We get an immediate holding position where we are. The aircraft reduces its speed down towards a green dot, or it should be a green dot, uh, which would be more most efficient. I'm just going to select slightly higher speeds. Let's keep it at decimal seven. One. There we go. And here we are in the hold. We can adjust this hold. So if I reselect it there and I want to make it slightly longer so it's currently a one minute hold at this altitude it would be uh, usually in the UK anyway 1.5 minutes I can put in 1.5 and you'll see on the navigation display it increases in size and same again we'll go back to our flight plan and insert and there we have a longer hold it's also possible to adjust the inbound course Let's say we want to make it 180 and the Airbus will fly an entry into that. Rare to change a hold once you're in it, but there we go. When we're done with the hold, let's say air traffic say, okay, you can continue now to Nugra. If I press immediate exit, the Airbus will fly straight back round to the point we were at. And we now have this continuity, which I will clear out and insert. And now we should see the Airbus fly around this loop and back straight out towards Nugra. And here we are back over our point 
and now the airplane should continue with the flight uh, to Nougat and as we can see that's now become our two waypoints and same in the FMGC Nougat. Great and off we go. So what if air traffic control wants us to hold at this waypoint at the Nougat waypoint? I'm currently planning on flying the Bovington arrival although that doesn't I think that starts at Nougat Yep. Um, is there a hold calculated for us? So there's no hold there uh, from our chart. So for this one, it'll just be a case of whatever air traffic tells us, or it could be whatever we decide. So it's very simply uh, the same as what we did to do a present position hold, except we'll select the point we want to hold at. So we want to hold at the waypoint Nougat. If I select next to it, and now go to hold and then inbound course so we could just do computed which I believe in this case would just be what we arrive at Nougat so if I do computed 170 right turn if there was a database hold that would mean it's a hold that is coded in there uh, for example on one of these arrivals so some, one of the later waypoints Westcott or Bovingdon has a computed hold because we can see it on the charts but Nugri doesn't. So there we go, 170 right turns one minute and I can return to here and do temporary incident. And there we go, now we can see our hold over Nugra just as we had earlier and it's exactly the same if we want to uh, leave that point as well. Once we enter the hold we can do immediate exit. Let's say air traffic control changed their mind and we can carry on past Nugra onto the bombing and one Bravo arrival so we don't need that hold anymore. How do we get rid of it? Well, a bit like deleting a normal waypoint in the FMGC, I can just press clear and now select the hold R line. It's a right hand hold, hence hold R. So I'm going to clear hold. And now we see on our navigation display that line just takes us past Nugra and along. Now I'll insert that. And there we go. It no longer exists in the uh, flight plan in our uh, computer. So there is a couple of ways of setting up the holds for our arrival. Let's say we want to plan to hold, so we don't know if we're going to hold or not, but it's busy at Heathrow, so Bovingdon is a likely place to hold. So let's load in the hold there. So I'm going to scroll through to all those ahead to Bovingdon, and as I said, here's the Bovingdon 1 Bravo arrival that we're flying. Holding over Bovingdon is 117 with right hand turns. So I'm going to select exactly as we did Bovingdon, hold. And now if I do compute it, uh, well maybe the database doesn't contain it, so let's have a look. So I would expect that to automatically have 117, perhaps it doesn't in this one, although that is the inbound track anyway, so it, it doesn't really make much difference. But that's why I would expect to see a database hold. Um, anyway, ROM 17 right hand turns, same as before, and we'll insert that. And if I go to plan mode on our EFIS control, plan, and now zoom in so we can see more clearly, I can see this little little white arrow telling me that there's a hold entered at Bovington. So when we get there, it's going to go into a right hand hold. So that's useful. It doesn't draw out the whole thing just yet, but you can see that there is one loaded in. Something to be aware of is if I have a hold loaded, for example, at Bovington, and then we change our minds as to which arrival we're going to fly. So let's say we get told we want to do the RS9 right and instead of the Bobbin and 1 Bravo we'll do the Bobbin and 1 Charlie slightly different waypoints and return slightly unrealistic but there we go and then I insert that it's going to want me on a heading track first so let's do heading and insert and it hasn't warned us but if you look and we look on our navigation display at Bobbingdon there is no longer a hold and I can make that clear if we go direct to Westcott's and bring up Bobbingdon there it is there's no hold so by changing the runway and arrival you will lose the hold that you previously entered so now we would have to re-enter it so Bobbingdon hold 117 right hand turns now there's one more thing to see here, which is the last exit. 
So this takes into account your reserve fuel and it should take into account your alternate fuel as well. So I don't think it is here, however, because I haven't entered an alternate fuel, but it's telling us at 1631, we'll have 1.6 tons and we'll need to leave the hold just, uh, there to land with our final reserves still in tanks. So let's set that because our final reserves are 1.3. I can also see on the flight plan page how much fuel I expect to arrive at the hold. So if I scroll along and then press one of these across arrows, at the moment I see the track and the time. So that is the track to get there or between these two points. That is the time will arrive, that's the speed and that's the flight level. If I press across, now we see the fuel. So we're expecting to arrive at the bobbing and hold with 4.5 tonnes of fuel on board. So that gives you some idea. You could then work out how much time you have to hold if you know how much fuel you want to leave the hold with. So what I'll do is, let's say we were given direct to Bovingdon to hold by a traffic control, which is not unrealistic, and now we can see our arrival and that hold has been drawn with an entry. We've also got our little deceleration point where the airplane will want to slow down for our arrival into the hold, as long as we're in managed speed. So I'm going to start down now. Let's say we were cleared down to flight level 100 to enter the hold, to open descent with managed speeds. So I'll start open descent. And now I'll just uh, let the airplane fly down into the arrival just so you can look at it and prove it all works. As we got closer to the hold, I wanted to see if the aeroplane would warn us about our entry speed. So as you can see, we're currently doing 300 knots in selected speed. If we we're in managed speed, as we pass that magenta dot on the navigation display, the aeroplane would have automatically reduced its speed towards the hold. Because we were in selected speed, I was wondering if the aeroplane would give us a warning. In real life, uh, in some fits of Airbus, the MCD will give you a message saying, uh, set hold speed or something like that to warn you that you're too fast for the hold entry or speed error. It didn't, uh, there could just be this fit of Airbus or maybe the simulator doesn't have that feature. But there we go, so it didn't warn me. So I've entered the hold uh, far too fast. You, you couldn't enter hold at 300 knots realistically, you'd go too wide. And now I'm using the speed brakes to slow us down, ready for uh, the next phase. But that's what I was doing here. So here we are now entering the hold at uh, Bovingdon, Bravo, November, November, and making our right turn. And we can see I've gone into managed speed, we're level at flight level 100, and the managed speed gives us a green dot, which is should be uh, the most efficient speed for us to sit in the hold at. If we look down at our MCDU, it's all as we saw earlier, we've got a hold right hand turn in here, the option to immediate exit, uh, and then the waypoints for the rest of the arrival along. There. So if we immediately exit, the airplane will fly back to Bombardier and along the uh, green string that we drew out in our flight planning stage. Something else I wanted to show you, uh, slightly uh, trivial I suppose, but if we're in the hold, air traffic will often clear you to descend because you'll be in a hold with aircraft above and beneath you. And as the aircraft beneath you begin their approaches, you'll all keep descending. So it's rare to hold for a long time at the same flight level. So let's pretend air traffic control clears us to descend now to flight level uh, 80. I can put an 80 there as we saw with our autopilot tutorial videos. I can now uh, choose how to do it. I wouldn't want to descend too quickly in the hold because there could be airplanes beneath us. TCAS would show us usually, but even so, if you're in a hold, the chances are there's airplanes ahead of you or beneath you. So, what I'll do is uh, select a thousand feet minute, which would be a calm rate of descent. It also means we get out of the way quickly quickly enough for the airplanes above us. So then two dots pull and speed, vertical speed, and we'll stay in the hold and descent. As we pass through 10,000 feet, we'll start preparing the airplane with a few other uh, things that we might do at this point. But there is another way. We can also just push for managed descent, thrust idle des, and in the real airplane, that would normally give us a 1,000 feet per minute descent rate. It seems that in this airplane, in the simulator it does a thrust idle descent 
So that's actually slightly too fast. So probably yeah, we would select a thousand meter minute. So here we go, turning 1,000 feet per minute down to flight level 80. And then the chances are from here, or, or maybe a little bit lower, you'd get cleared onto radar vectors or to follow the arrival uh, and continue your approach. And we can see our fuel figure updating. As we sit in the hold, this number will go down. So it, at the moment, expects us to land at Heathrow, 9 right, with 4.1 tonnes of fuel, because we currently have 4.3. So it's thinking about 300 kilos for the approach. But if we stay in the hold, this number will reduce uh, as it passes over the holding point because we keep spending more time burning fuel here. So this is what pilots will often be calculating at this point to work out how long we actually have to hold. Our fuel prediction page gives us an extra time figure as well at the moment, but that may not be accurate if it doesn't include your alternate fuel as well. That's it for this video on holding in the TOLIS Airbus A321. I hope it's been useful. As I said, it's not for any real world use. It's just uh, to hopefully give you another perspective on using your home flight simulator. As always if there's any feedback or anything else you'd like to see do let me know in the comments and there'll be plenty more videos to come on more features of this aircraft. Thank you very much for watching.